this has been quite encouraging. I mean, uh, we're talking to cadres and saying to them, if structures of the ANC could express themselves in the manner that they have done, even uh, without uh, us whispering a lot in their own ears, that goes to show that they know uh, the leadership of their own organization. I mean, they are things that we uh, spoke uh, about which we believe that should not be done in the organization and mm -hmm. such things include the use of money to influence uh, right. uh, <coughs> how our members should think. We, we should, we should uh, debar such conducts. Mm. We should expose them wherever they read their ugly hates. Uh, those candidates uh, who are doing such activities, sometimes not even known by our own structures, but wanting to emerge to come and lead the organization, should be exposed for what they represent. How pro problematic is that issue whereby you know members have to be given money just to lend their support to candidates or even their campaigns? <laughs> well, well with what has been happening, especially during this uh, nomination processes, uh, it did show that uh, it is possible that uh, if we are not careful as members of the ANC, those that have been part of the organization have committed their full lives to the organization, that uh, people could come with bags full of cash and uh, <laughs> expropriate our own revolution. So we have got to be vigilant. We have got to expose uh, such acts wherever they rear their ugly heads. Because we know each other, mm. you know, we know. We know that, uh, okay, this is Masina, he has been in structures. This is Mbalula, he has been in structures. This is Lamola, has... we know each other in the organization. So when you come and have been a member and have not occupied leadership positions in the organization, we will be able to know mm. that, but who is this fellow? And we'll be able to tell that there must have been something extreme that makes our structures to actually affirm this character. Maybe it was because of the use of Anyone money. Anyone in particular? Well, not necessarily anyone in particular. Mm. I'm just saying that we know each other in the organization. We know. We know who's doing what on the ground. We know who's doing what. We know who leaves what back when they go away. Right. We know these things. Because we are raising these things not because we want to speak ill of others. We are just uh, cautioning our members that when they go to the 55th National Conference to ultimately decide on who should become their leadership, they should also recall the credentials of the individuals that they are electing to be able to take their organization forward. The reason is because the ANC is not a new organization. The ANC has been alive since 1912. It has got a strong history. And the ANC has always championed the cause of liberating and freeing the people of this country. It means that those that must ultimately occupy mm. these positions of leadership and responsibility must be men and women who are tried and tested, who could be trusted with responsibility themselves, that we could be able to, we could be able to locate their role in the organization, not just today because we are going to conference. Right. We should be able to say, oh, where did we see Pulo? Oh. We recall this young one from the ANC Youth League when he was uh, its treasurer general. Even if you don't vote for us, but be able to place us somewhere in the history of the organization. But if we can't place you somewhere in the history of the organization, then it goes to tell a story that, but then if we can't, if we can't remember you in our mm. structures, how did you come about? So speaking of transparency, have you approached any donors or funders for, for your campaign? Well, I didn't have to. I've got very little to give to donors. But of course, uh, I will be declaring to, uh, well, we are declaring to uh, the, the electoral committee on whatever, where they've been, even if it is our own uh, uh, small internal resources that would have been used to aid the campaign. We have got to disclose that. Mm. Disclosure is important because if you talk about uh, ethical leadership, it has got to express itself on how you do things as the African National Congress. And I think the, the, the process led by uh, Comrade Khalema Mutlanti as the chairperson of the electoral committee is one that begins to bring about uh, that kind of spirit. I mean, it is now becoming uh, an easy thing to do. I mean, cadres of the ANC are, being, are beginning to accept the notion of ethical conduct. Once we do that ourselves, who are privileged to be in the leadership positions, it becomes easier to even drive forward the notion of building an ethical developmental state because it means that individuals that are leading that charge are themselves ethical. So the ANC is leading the charge, something that no any other political party is doing for their own uh, internal democratic processes, saying 
Let's be transparent. L let us conduct ourselves in an ethical manner. Let us prove to society that we could be trusted with responsibility so that they know that where we might have had challenges in the past, learning out of those, we are now able to steer uh, the country and our own organization forward. I have to let you go, but before I do, uh, as, a, as a candidate now for the Treasurer General, are, are you the answer to some of the cash flow problems within the ANC? Is there a strategy that you have in mind in place uh, should you be officially elected? Because we know the ANC has been going through some cash flow problems. Well, I have said that if there is anyone contesting to be a Treasurer General and they want to come and project themselves as if they've got a blueprint strategy to deal with problems of the ANC, uh, then they do not know how the organization functions. The ANC functions on the basis of collective leadership. We've got collective leadership. The ANC is not a new organization. When you go to the 55th National Conference, the ANC is not going to start existing from that point. It has always existed. You have got to start by assessing the work that those that have been Treasurer Generals before have done. What is it that they've been able to get right? What are the challenges that they faced? For instance, talk about Comrade Paul Mashatile, the outgoing Treasurer General. He has had to deal with a difficult situation of uh, COVID the COVID-19 pandemic and all of that. And yet, he has been an advocate of saying, we are a caring organization. We can't retrench our people. Now, this brought about certain challenges, not being able to meet our own uh, payroll requirements now and then, because the ANC really relies on three primary sources of funding. Mm. It relies on uh, uh, donors through the Political Party Funding Act, it relies on subscriptions through membership fees, the Progressive Citizen Forum, the PBF. Mm. All of those are fall within the arena of uh, uh, subscriptions. And then it also relies uh, on national fiscals. You mm. see, when parties get seats in Parliament, based, based on the... I mean, a seat is worth a bit of money. Mm. Based on those seats, then you are allocated from national fiscals. Now, when you suffer electoral declines, it also contributes towards how much you are able to receive as an organization. So as a parting shot, right. it is the work that the collective must do together to make sure that the ANC is able to mobilize sufficient resources to conduct its political work and deal with all the different challenges of our people on the ground. All right, we'll leave it then. I appreciate you speaking to me this morning. ANC spokesperson Bule Mabe joining me this morning. We know a contender uh, for Treasurer General in the upcoming 55th uh, ANC's uh, National Elective Conference expected, of course, to take place in December.